Hello, I'm Thomas with Geon Technologies, and in this short video, we'll be looking at a Persona device implementation. Our target hardware is the Z-Board, another zinc-based platform that has industry-wide support, and the analog device is FMCOMS3, a dual transceiver FMC based on the AD9361. For this project's build environment, we again used our Yocto-based build process with MetaRed Hike SDR, which is now available upon request. And similar to the MicroZ demo video, this build also uses the MetaXilinx layer as a baseline for the machine definition. First, we extended the environment to pull in the analog device's kernel source, which has drivers and device trees for their HDL that provide easy libIIO support for data ingress and egress to the transceiver. We then patched their HDL build infrastructure so that we can quickly add our own HDL, your block here, data processing chains, which become our Red Hawk Persona devices on the firmware side of the design. Second, for Red Hawk, the design includes a front end interfaces compatible programmable device, which is a hybrid concept. It serves as the controller for loading the personas on the fly, which involves swapping out the FPGA's bitstream without restarting the system. As you can see, the system shows up as our programmable node in Red Hawk, and I'm allocating the FEI tuner to 100 MHz. One of the advantages of our design is that the baseline HDL skeleton allows for normal FEI operation, including tuning and decimating in fabric while exposing it to Red Hawk with a common generic interface. We can also bypass any inserted processing chain IP blocks with a few register writes. Cutting over to the camera footage, you can see I have the receiver hooked up to the signal generator running at 100 MHz. The adjacent transmitter is hooked to our scope, which of course is showing nothing since we're not transmitting. For the sake of it, I'm sweeping up and down a few megahertz around our center. So that's normal operation. Here I'm using a script to deallocate the FEI persona so that the other persona can be loaded. In this case, it's a repeater persona. The concept behind loading a persona is that when it is loaded, it controls the entire front end. So a complementary set of allocations have to occur. First, the persona is allocated against, which in turn calls on the parent programmable device, our FEI programmable device, to load the persona's bitstream. Second, the persona allocates all of the tuners in this case and connects to the digital tuner FEI port so that it can control it. The persona is now running and in control of the front end. In this case, our persona is an in-fabric repeater, or another way to think of it is a bent pipe. Data still flows out to Redhawk through the ARM processor and libIIO, but the data stream is also flowing back out to the transmitter without leaving the fabric. Pulling up the plot again, you can see from the axes that the second allocation occurred, centering us at 1.9 GHz. So I need to configure the persona back down to 100 MHz. And there's our offset tone where we last left it. Switching over to the waterfall and switching over to the camera and disregarding that plotter bug, we can see we're still able to sweep the frequency and view the data with some aliasing in Red Hawk. Back at our scope, however, our repeater is doing its job as we now have a 100 megahertz tone. To unload the persona, we simply deallocate it. Pretty slick. If you're interested in this design, please check out the blog post referenced in the description. We go into a bit more detail about how we worked through this build process to extend a completely off-the-shelf set of hardware and software to make a very interesting system. And that's it for this demo of a persona device running on a Z-board using an analog device's FMCOMS3 as the tuner. This is Thomas with Geon Technologies. As always, please don't hesitate to contact us for in-class training and support. Thanks for watching.